This is the Mercedes Euclid Model 29. It says so right there. And this machine was made by Mercedes Bureau Maschinenwerke, uh, as it says on this plaque at the front. This particular one was made in around 1940 or 19, 1941, but this model was introduced in 1934. Mercedes was a company set up in 1906 and the next year they took over the calculator company set up by Christel Hamann. And Christel Hamann was a very prolific inventor and he had just invented a, a new mechanism, a new principle uh, called proportional levers and the Mercedes Euclid machines all use that principle. The first models that he made for Mercedes were uh, very much based on the arithmometer uh, kind of machines of Thomas de Colmar. So they're rectangular and boxy with a crank on the top. Uh, and the first few models they introduced uh, uh, electrically driven machines as well and keyboards but it wasn't until 1934 that the whole design was uh, changed to this to have a keyboard at the front with a carriage on the back a bit more like a typewriter all their machines by this time were electric except for this one model this was the only one uh, that was still manual and, and this one was aimed at the low end of the market so it also didn't have a lot of the other features that the electric models did have it doesn't have a, a storage, an extra storage register it doesn't have any facilities for multiplication so the only uh, special thing, party trick that this machine has is automatic division so let me show you how this machine works. It's fairly straightforward. It has a, a register at the top here with 12 digits and a 6 digit counter and a 7 column uh, keyboard. Uh, let me show you the how to do addition. There's a button here that you can push in and lock down to, uh, to add and what that button does is it allows you to uh, add numbers separately because each time you now turn the crank the input is cleared. I've entered a number and if I turn the crank it gets added to the register and the counter is incremented. Unfortunately on this particular one this clearing doesn't work as uh, 100% it only cleared one of the buttons in this case so let's see yeah now it has cleared it so uh, yeah if you keep have this button down it's supposed to clear the keyboard each time you turn the crank if I undo this button now it won't clear the keyboard automatically and you have to clear it using this button often this button has an L on it for Lushen, so clearing so if I enter a number you can clear it with that. So if I, to add another number just enter it and turn the crank. Um, to clear the register you pull this lever and to clear the counter this lever. Um, to subtract you don't turn the crank the opposite way. You can try but all that does is nothing. There's a safety here that yeah it just moves backwards without turning the axle. Now to uh, subtract you have to switch, change this switch. Now every every time you turn the crank the number that was entered gets subtracted from the register. 
you can see it's it did so but it's now um, underflowed so uh, it shows all nines but uh, yeah let's clear that away let's try that again let's first uh, add a larger number and now subtract something smaller subtract there we go uh, yeah multiplication is just the, the usual um, this whole uh, carriage can move but you have to do that by hand to the right to move it to the left you can use this button near the crank so anyway if I want to multiply 1 2 3 4 1234 if I want to multiply that by itself well I've shifted the carriage four places or, or three places so that is now on the leftmost uh, digit I want that to be a, a 1 and I shift it and now twice shift it and now three times and the last shift and four times so here it now says the number I've multiplied it by and here is the result that's 1234 squared Uh, now let's do uh, a division. To divide you have to push down and lock down this button, the division button. You can see that it's moved these levers, it does that automatically. I'll also shift the whole carriage to the right as far as it will go. In the register I'll uh, put one number, uh, I'll do 355, 355, you can do that with these uh, uh, buttons at the top. And in the uh, input I'll do 113. So this is the classic approximation of pi, 355 divided by 113. So all I have to do now is turn the crank. Uh, the, these levers here has, have been set up so that it's going to subtract and the counter is going to increase, increment. So let's, let's do that. Subtract once, twice, three times. I keep going and the next time it'll underflow and automatically shift the carriage one step to the left. But because I've subtracted it once too many, as it were, it's now going to start adding it. When the carriage shifted, these levers swapped her over, so now it's going to add the number again, but decrement the counter. So whereas the counter is now at four zero, which is too much, it's now going to start counting down. And it's going to do that all the way until the register uh, overflows again. So it becomes positive again. So it shifts once more and it's back to subtracting as normal. When it comes to the end, uh, the whole uh, mechanism locks up. You can also see that from this uh, carriage moving button, it's uh, it's not uh, in the normal position. And yeah, the, the crank just does nothing. You can try, but it it'll just 
uh, slip. The answer can be read off here. It's 3.14159 and here we still have uh, a small remainder. To uh, release the carriage again so that it uh, so you can go and go further you have to shift it pull it slightly to the right and release it so now it's it's back to normal now you can start uh, adding or subtracting or whatever Mercedes uh, the company uh, continued making these machines uh, after the Second World War but they were based in East Germany so when the Iron Curtain came down they only produced these machines for the Eastern Bloc. Those later ones were usually in, in grey instead of uh, black and green and they continued making versions of this machine until the late 1960s, early 1970s. When the, uh, when the uh, Iron Curtain came down, when the Berlin Wall came down, the company, uh, by that time it was part of uh, Robotron, it was called, and yeah, that company broke up and was sold off. So that was the Mercedes Euclid, model 29. Thank you for watching.